What it do y'all, we back again with some unique looks at the 8th house. I want to start with the concept of underground. If you think of like uh, miners, you know, miners who mine for like gold and certain resources underground and like archaeologists, I think this is heavily associated with the 8th uh, eighth house because you you have to go beneath the surface whether it's uh beneath the ground or you know deep underwater to find certain things that are hidden and uh the eighth house is always gonna uh sextile earth houses it's always gonna sextile the sixth house and it's always gonna sextile the tenth house and it's always gonna be on the axis of the second house and the reason why I think uh, sextile in the tenth house is so important is because think about a miner and think about of uh, an archaeologist. Th think about the things they're mining for: mining for gold, mining for oil, mining for copper, mining for these certain things and these uh, what do they call that uh, fossil fuels and fuel in general. Think of archaeologists. Uh, finding certain ancient cities, artifacts, even certain minerals and uh, metals that were placed in these societies. Both of these things deal with time. This is the sextile to the tenth house. If you're mining for gold or mining for certain minerals or fuel, or if you're an uh, archaeologist and you're looking for certain uh, ancient artifacts, both of these things deal with time because whatever you're looking for whatever you're looking for was there way before you so whatever you're looking for underground you can expect that the thing that you're looking for has been there for a certain amount of time um eighth house along with a lot of the other water energies are unseen they're like internal this is why um the thing that differentiate differentiate from the fourth house is like uh the eighth house is very deep it's very intense deep so um if the fourth house is like um the surface level or you know right by the beach the eighth house is like the deep unexplored depths of the ocean and another thing that um eighth house shares with the eleventh house is the the energy of unknownness eighth house has a lot of energy of the unknown because you know it's hidden the eighth house is a very very interesting house because it deals with so many things one of the main things it deals with is merging and bondage and that can manifest itself in a plethora of ways like think of marriage if you have a bank account before you're married and your partner has a bank account before they're married, when you do get married, then those bank accounts may merge and you become one. And even something that doesn't even, you know, deal with finances. Think of your personal space. When two people come together, their personal spaces are merged or bonds together. Um, there's so many ways like bondage and merging can go. Um, desire is a huge thing with uh eighth house but not only eighth house again that sextile with uh the tenth house because you know eighth house people or scorpios they may take time working on their desires they may have their desires for a certain amount of time like they their desires may be eternal you know it might go past the vessel they're in um this house is uh you know i'm gonna make a video about co-ruling and ruling planets but you know this this house is ruled by mars and pluto heavy emphasis on the pluto is because it's a very distant and deep you know pluto is in deep space it's like it's so far out that sunlight barely reaches it and it's such a like it's like a frost planet it's like isolated it's in the depths of its isolation and with that you know you know comes a different level of psyche you know eighth house rep represents the depths of someone's psyche their subconscious um 
this house is heavily associated with transformation transformation to crises uh pressure melting emerging and transformation through relationships um like i said uh if you if you heard this before you you would know that the ocean is one of the main unexplored things of planet earth and you know it's really the bottom of the ocean and this is why i say uh eighth house energy is connected heavily to the energy of unknown you don't really know a lot of things that's down there um hidden motives you know mars is still a ruling energy in there so it's not like aries where it doesn't really care who sees in motives they're gonna go after after it regardless but with eighth house energy it's like strategic it's a hidden motive you may not really see these people's motives and they may go about it like uh through strategy and time whereas first house people or you know aries energy they may not you know have that level of patience um one thing that i thought of is the power of negativity now um negativity and i know this may sound might sound weird but negativity isn't always negative depending on what type of energy you hold you can you know you're you may be an alchemist you may know how to transmute negative energy into positive and this is a, a positive aspect of the eighth house you know a negative energy of it is just staying there and just thinking that negativity is all there is but if you truly hold the power of eighth house energy you would know that the next sign over is sagittarius through the darkness and through the tribulation and through the negativity you come out optimism or you come out optimistic because you've already been drugged down you've been beaten up and battered and you know you have a, a higher overview of that so you come out optimistic and you know exploring new ways of life and instead of just staying there um this also represents like uh creatures that are in the underground you know think of deep sea creatures those are some intense looking and intense living creatures in terms of land uh if you think of like moles like moles that dig um that's something that came to mind uh snakes i believe snakes are heavily i believe snakes scorpions and spiders snakes scorpions and spiders are heavily heavily uh eighth house influence now starting with snakes think about snakes a snake cannot live if it does not shed its uh, previous skin or the dead skin. And you can look at that as a transformation. You have to shed that so you can, you know, start living good. Scorpions, you know, you know, that's its that's its sign or sign a uh, representative. That's, you know, fairly obvious. Um, uh, the stinger that's another thing I'm gonna uh, talk uh, talk about next is you know scorpions have a stinger that you know has a uh, venom in it and another another thing that um, I don't know if y'all noticed but think about crabs and think about scorpions they look very very similar the crab being the represent representation of one water sign the fourth house and then the Scorpio house being ruled by scorpion one is one that hangs out near the beach you know in certain areas scorpions if i'm not mistaken you can find scorpions in a lot of places usually in the desert in extreme environments spiders um i love spiders i study spiders a lot the one thing that um lets me know that spiders are heavily associated with um uh eighth house energy is one they you know they have eight legs but 
another thing is their creative power now think about where they shoot their silk out of it's more of like the the back end area the rear end area and they use this they use this silk they use this second house resources and they build a home out of it or build you know whatever they can i mean uh, if you if you haven't seen like a spider documentary I, I would highly recommend it because spiders just don't make webs out of their silk they make weapons they make a, a traps they make a lot of things out of their silk they, they use these things as weapons and these things come out of it there's spiders are very interesting um something that came to mind was bats too i don't know a lot about bats but you know bats you know nocturnal very intense looking creature um i would i would throw bats in there but you know i would have to do a little bit more research but um going into the sea think of like uh just deep sea creatures uh um you know fish with the light on his head and um maybe even whales but you know i'm gonna say whales for uh 12 house energy but you can look at you know certain deep sea things certain deep sea currents um even underground built facilities um because if you're building something underground it's going to take more time than if you were to build on the surface e at least i would think so i'm not sure i'm i'm not for sure but i would think that if you're building something underground it would take more time than if you would build build it under the surface um the eighth house is heavily associated with um power and control i think the reason is because first of all uh eighth house is a very an intense sign and it's underneath and uranus is exalted in scorpio so there's a heavy and uh there's a heavy like influence of freedom and you know revolution so this could represent the power struggles within yourself power struggles within the home society workplace it's about you know exploring the depths of yourself and, you know depending on where you are that may not be promoted and you know maybe looked down upon so a lot of eighth house people may go through struggles with their boss parents friends relatives and even certain psychological uh structures um one thing i noticed about eighth house people they're they have this like natural confidence i always think of like a hawk like or eagle if you look at a hawk or eagle's eyes it's like piercing it's like they're looking past you and looking into you and, you know that's a, a great power that eighth house people have is they can see through you a lot of water signs can in different ways but eighth house can see what you're hiding they can you know they can just read you this is a powerful house and uh you know i'm gonna do m many more videos on the houses the ones you see now are just like volume one um i'm always update these but uh that's been the eighth house and uh i'll see you in the ninth